Welcome back to Real Life Reviews and in this video we're going to take a look at the Hoka Rocket X2, Hoka's latest offering in the high-end carbon plated running shoe market. Let's dive in with some of the numbers which is something I know many of you are really keen on. The drop on this shoe is 5mm, that's 36 at the heel and 31 at the forefoot. So you're not going to get close to coming foul of the 40 millimeter rule if that's uh, of interest to you. And five millimeters, well, four, five millimeters is pretty much the norm. So yeah, Hoka's there with everyone else. In terms of weight, let's put the shoe on the scales and we have 214 grams. A couple of comparisons. I've got the New Balance fuel cell here, put him on the scales, 217 grams, and I've got Nike's Alpha Fly Next Percent, 218 grams. So a difference of three grams and four grams. I guess you, if you're being really pedantic, you'd call that a win for Hoka. Um, I'm not convinced that that amount of weight actually makes a huge amount of difference. Uh, however, if you're a pedantic pedant, uh, win for Hoka. Uh, total clarity, this is a size eight and a half UK. The, both the other shoes were size eight UK. However, they're the same size shoe. They're my shoe, they're the shoe I wear. And what I would say in terms of fit is that the Hoka Rocket X2 does come up small, even against other Hokers. Uh, you're probably aware I, I love the Speed Goats. I've had two, three, four, five. Um, I, I've run in the I run in the Tecton X2 as well, and they're all size eight UK. I could not get a size eight onto my foot in the Rocket X2. This is an eight and a half. So yeah, size fitting. You need to go up. I, my personal recommendation recommendation is go up half a size. Staying with some of the basics, like so much of Hoka's range, this is a neutral shoe. And the cushioning in the shoe, well, you, many of you will be aware, Hoka have a, a sliding scale from plush to balanced to responsive, and this shoe is very much a responsive shoe. Having said that, I personally think Hoka are well known for having comfortable cushioned shoes. I find them shoe for shoe more cushioned than pretty much everything else on the market. However, a responsive shoe. And we'll come a bit more onto the midsole in a moment. Looking at the top construction though, we have an upper mesh that's really lightweight and actually pretty breathable. It's a little bit of a step away from a number of shoes that we've seen recently. Uh, the, the Nike and the New Balance that you've just seen had more of a, a knitted weave. This on the other hand is very much more, it, it's still very lightweight, very flexible, um, but it's much more of a solid construction rather than a knitted construction. Uh, the tongue itself is gusseted. I'll try and open it up but it's not a full gusset so it's got little straps that there we go you can just see in there so it's got a little strap at the front so the gusset doesn't run flush all the way down it's got a little gap in it uh, there's no real foam padding to the tongue it's very thin but with this style of shoe that's quite normal and actually you don't feel it where there's a big difference i think here between this shoe and other shoes is the heel so to turn it round, I don't know if you can quite catch, but the heel goes to quite a thin point there. And if we look inside the heel and try and get a look there, you can see that. Now, does this mean it grips on your Achilles tendon? No, I've not found it. I've not found that at all. It, but it is, it's almost like it's got an Achilles cup there. And the top structure is very, very thin. If I had one small problem with this shoe, which I now don't have because I know about it, when I get new shoes, I put them on and I walk around the house a bit just to get the feel of them and just to make sure there's no pinch points. One of the two shoes, I had a little rub 
at the, at the, at the back just onto my Achilles tendon. And what I'd done when I put the shoe on was I'd managed to fold in the top of the heel. It's just a case of making sure that you hold the heel back when you put the shoe on. So an interesting cut, you've got cushioning on both sides of the, the heel. So you've still got those little cushion plates, but they don't go all the way around. Um, I, th I actually think I quite like it. And I've not yet started running in this shoe with a heel lock. Uh, I've wanted to test it out and see it uh, just with normal tying. Uh, particularly if I've got, I've got in mind using this in long course triathlon um, and not necessarily using elas elastic laces. I want to be able to tie it reasonably quickly and therefore the heel lock is not necessarily the way to go. So yeah, the whole upper structure, I really like it. It's different in that it's not knitted, but it's nice. So who could call that, uh, that mesh a technical synthetic mesh? Well, you'd hope it's technical and it's basically it's synthetic, it's not natural, it's not leather or something. So yeah, words, words, Hoka, use them, why not? Um, the other thing to mention whilst we're up here and I kind of touched on it earlier is we're used to seeing on a lot of these shoes like an external cage for the midfoot to help hold it in. The cage on this shoe is internal. You don't notice it as such. Um, it's a subtle difference. It probably helps in terms of the laying of the upper, um, but it's got an internal midfoot cage that is really, really effective. The toe box, again, I touched on this earlier, is a nice wide toe box, good width, uh, then coming into a good, hold with that midfoot cage. So now to the meat of this shoe, that midsole and carbon plate. So we're looking at uh, Hoka's Piba Foam, it, their Profly X construction, and what we have here is we have a carbon plate fitted between two layers of the foam. And in fact, if I turn the shoe upside down, we're not necessarily looking at the outer sole at the moment, but you can actually see the carbon plate there. And it slots between, uh, it's sandwiched between those two layers of foam. Those two layers, Hoka will tell you, are ultra responsive. Well, they are pretty damn responsive, uh, as are pretty much all the foams now, but this is a good one. It is very good, if not the best. So they're high responsive, they're ultra responsive, high performing foam. And the, the Meta Rocker, is an early stage meta rocker, which, it, which is interesting in some respects with lots of shoes tending towards the mid and the latter. Um, does it make a difference? Difficult. You can feel the difference. You can definitely feel the difference if, for example, you wear this shoe and then you go and put on a, a Nike Alpha Fly or a New Balance um, Fuel Cell. You can definitely feel the difference. Is one quicker than the other? Well, a lot of that depends on your style of running and also the pace that you are running at. Um, it's impossible to sit here and say, this shoe is better than that shoe is better than that shoe. I have an opinion based on my style and type of running. And for my style and type of running, this shoe, I... <laughs> I'm gonna say outperforms all the others. The, the closest to it is the New Balance. Um, and, and I'm a little bit in two minds. I need a bit more time with this, I think probably. Uh, but this has a different Meta Rocker. This has got an early stage, as I've just said. I've just done a, a run with Tempo Blocks. So it's had endurance um, longish blocks in it, four minute tempo sets two minutes recovery, four minutes tempo, two minutes recovery, back into endurance. So I've just done a quite a significant run working through the paces. And what I would say is that when you up the pace on this shoe, it really comes into its own. But that's not to say it's only good for that high pace because when I hang off then into a recovery phase, a two minutes recovery, it's really comfortable and that foam is doing its job. It's really comfortable at that level as well. So yeah, 
Is it my favourite shoe? As I say this now, yes it is. That's a big call. What else can I tell you about this shoe? Well, Hoka are starting to tick the eco boxes. So the sock liner upper is recycled polyester and the laces that we have, they are recycled polyester, 30% uh, and 70% recycled nylon. I think I've got that right. So well done Hoka, definitely a step, or pun intended, a step in the right direction. So let's have another quick look at that outsole. And what we've got here is we've got a pretty good tough covering on the outsole. So I'm anticipating really good wear out of this shoe compared to other high-end carbon plated shoes. So is this the best carbon plated running shoe on the market? I'm going to say yes. There we are. I've come up with it. Uh, for me, at the moment, it's just pipping the New Balance and I think this is the best shoe. Should you buy it? Well, that's a, a decision you've got to make and balance that with costs and the running that you're doing. Now, I say the running that you're doing, we've got to accept that although this is touted as an elite runner's road shoe, high end, a carbon plated shoe is going to benefit whatever running that, that you do, whatever standard you are, and whether you're doing a park run or whether you're running a marathon. So ultimately, it's a case of try one on and can you afford it? Can you justify spending the money on it? If you can, this shoe will be great for you. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, give it that like and share it with your friends. If you'd like to buy this shoe, well, we've got a link to Wiggle in the description down below. And if you go through that link, then you sometimes get some great deals. But more importantly for us, we get a small percentage of what you spend. You don't spend any more. And that little percentage goes to helping to keep the channel going. If you've not yet subscribed, well, click on the little round picture just down here and three other carbon shoes to have a look at. We've got the Nike up there. We've got the New Balance up there, and down in this corner, we've got Hoka's Tecton X2 trail shoe. Thanks for watching.